Who is Ed the Pagan? That's a good question. So a lot of people would say he's Ed Hubbard. See, I'm not very guarded because it's a very guarded question. And that is because it really began in the most odd way. So basically, Ro Khan and Gary Meyer in 1995 was back out on the air, WLSAM, 15, you know, the 50,000 watt blowout, 87.5. Everybody knows it. It's very iconic. And they turned to speaking shows, talk shows. And I love talk shows. You know, I would listen to some music when I was growing up, but I was a talk show listener. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, they were talking. And I would occasionally call in because somebody said some something or they were talking about a holiday they were talking about whatever and about the third or fourth time and i really think it's the third time was because of course three times a charm uh gary the guy who was though not actually gary meyer but the guy who was doing the, the table says hey what do we should we call you i said well i'm at ed, ed, ed hubbard he goes oh no no that doesn't work hold on you're gonna be on in a minute and you know we listen to the show listen to the show 10 minutes later everybody says and we're with ed the pagan so the first time I was ever called Ed the Pagan was by a media personality to isolate me and to give me structure to his audio audience in a way that was so that I would reverberate and be identified, which meant he wanted me on the show again. I became part of the show. I mean, I answered probably every 12th or 15th show, you know, I would be on the, be on it as Ed the Pagan. And sometimes they, you know, they had my number. Sometimes they would call me, hey, would you come on the show? So I had a lot of that activity, and that's how I had the pagan first began. The next one would be is I had to get AOL email accounts. Okay, now this is where it is, and it was 10 letters. And I was working all sorts of things, and Ed the Pagan is exactly 10 letters. And so I have Ed the Pagan to this day as an AOL account. So I got more identified because that was kind of cool. When did I accept that I was going to be Ed the Pagan? That would happen in, um, I went to the Parliament World of Religions in 99. Very exciting event. We'll talk about that another time. It's a very important part, part of the story. But then for today, so I would be at a Four Quarters Conference 2000. And they had a lot of different people there. Uh, over on Zell. But Drema Baker, who ran then a pagan newspaper of great importance and was running this event, introduced me and says, and now we're going to have a report about the Parliament of 1999 in South Africa by Ed the Pagan. Okay. It's one thing to be doing it on a major radio show. It's kind of cool. I even knew it was called that in the Sun Times before this happened. I mean, so I've had these little events, Ed the Pagan at AOL time. But to have one of my own call me that shook me to the sun. I thought they were going to do to like throw me out of there. Like, how dare I? And they clapped. And so at that moment, I became, I really became Ed the Pagan as the teacher, as the sort of thing. And there's a lot of advantages to it. I'll, I'll talk about that later. But why I continued to be Ed the Pagan, I almost threw it away because I was so embarrassed. Like so many people, it was like to have that much exposure, to make that bold a claim, you'd have a lot of pressure on you. I did. I wanted to throw it away until... My high priestess, the, the woman who initiated me into my gardenerian third degree, Donna Cole Schultz, told me, it's great that you can be so far out of the closet. At this point, I had done radio shows. I'd done newspaper articles. So it wasn't about me being Ed the Pagan or being Pagan. I was already out. But being identified as Ed the Pagan, she said, you might be the only Pagan he ever knew. And that really struck me at the time, um, that I would be the only pagan they would ever, they might ever meet. And I said, okay, that was why I, I kind of accepted the name. I've been going since ever since then.